No additional reports, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to, uh, with your approval, go ahead to item 11. And um, it's requested by the commission um, representatives of Sable Trail are present for a presentation today. I believe Mr. Brian Farenthold will conduct that. Mr. Farenthold, if you would come forward, please. Uh, good morning, season's good morning. greetings. Uh, my name is Brian Farenthal, Commissioner Marshall, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Pritchard, good morning. Uh, I'm the Director of uh, Governmental Relations for Spectre Energy, but also, more importantly this morning, for the uh, Sable Trail Pipeline. Uh, I have some uh, distinguished guests with me as well this morning in the back, and uh, these are some experts. These are Andrea Grover. She's the uh, Director of Stakeholder Outreach. We have John Zimmer, who is the uh, senior, senior Environmental Project Manager. Uh, we also have Marty Bass, who's our Senior Construction Manager. And then we also have Roger Dice, who's here locally. Uh, he's our Right-of-Way Spread 3 Manager. And uh, that spread includes Mitchell, Colquitt, Brooks, and Lowndes. So uh, if we have specific questions uh, later, they can uh, answer in a more expert form than I can sometimes. As, uh, as you know, a government affairs person uh, sometimes can be the uh, universal picture but not can delve into the weeds uh, a lot of times. But uh, anyway, thank you for allowing us to come by and, uh, and chat with you this morning and give you an update of where we're at. Uh, I'm going to go through the uh, who is Sable Trail and Project Need. We'll go through the scope, uh, where we've been, where we're going, what we're hearing, uh, some core values, some economic benefits, and then uh, a q and A. I I do have some hard copies up here uh, uh, for anyone that wants a copy of this, and then you can follow along uh, as I uh, zip through this. So we'll, uh, we'll go to the, uh, the first page. Uh, there's the, uh, what I just mentioned. Here's our, our overall map. Sable Trail and Project Need. Uh, the, the green dotted line represents the Sable Trail transmission development. Uh, that is an underground pipeline, as you can see, uh, 474 miles, 36 inch diameter. This would all be underground. The pipeline would be underground. It's uh, uh, moving natural gas, so uh, it's interstate in, 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 uh, in its makeup. Uh, we will be connected to the, uh, the Williams Pipeline in Alabama. That's where the gas is originating. Uh, we deliver it just where that white, I mean that yellow box is. That's basically Orlando. That's a hub. And then uh, the blue dotted line is another uh, pipeline that's being constructed. And then uh, ultimately a lot of the uh, gas is destined for power plants in Florida. The uh, Sable Trail itself is a joint venture between uh, Spectra Energy and next era, uh, Spectra Energy is the operator, developer, and construction uh, manager of the project. We're we're doing all the uh, the the, the uh, uh, soles on the ground, the shoes on the ground. We uh, in this particular entity, there will be three compressor stations: uh, one in Alabama, two in Florida. No compressor stations are uh, designed to be uh, uh, built here in Lowndes County. So that's kind of the, uh, the overall uh, pipeline itself. The, uh, uh, as again, it's 474 miles and 36 inches in diameter. Uh, let's move forward. Here's a, a kind of a map, gives you a good thumbprint of where we're going. As you can see, four counties there in Alabama, uh, goes on to the uh, southwestern uh, portions of Georgia, uh, enters into Florida just uh, south of here, kind of parallel 75 to some degree, uh, and then uh, again, uh, ends up down in uh, Polk in Osceola County, and then uh, the Florida Southeast Connection would take that gas to other power plants as well. Here's a more uh, detailed map. You can see uh, Daughtry, Mitchell, Colquitt, Brooks, and Lowndes. That's kind of a, a dive into that. 
moving on. Here's a, here's a more detailed map. You can see the red line is our uh, current current proposed route. You can see the uh, city limits of Valdosta up there, and uh, you can pretty well see where the uh, as it comes into the uh, the western portion of the county. It's uh, that particular route is generally 100% adjacent to an existing natural gas pipeline in place. That is the uh, Southern Natural Gas Pipeline. It's been there for 50 years. And uh, just so you know that uh, in, in, in our dealings with that, uh, we, we tried to uh, be adjacent to that pipeline from Alabama all the way to the uh, Florida line. I might add that in, uh, in Lowndes County right now, uh, we've had 90% permission for survey. In other words, uh, out of 127 tracks that are in Lowndes County, we've gotten 90% where we can go in and stake, stake that area and, and get some, uh, we do three types of surveys, environmental, civil, and cultural. So uh, a 90% and uh, that red line represents 15.6 miles of pipeline. And here's, here's, a, here's a great, great map right here. The, uh, when we first came out and announced our Sable Trail project, we had a, uh, a route that uh, more or less went further, uh, I guess, east of this and north. And predominantly, that green route followed a existing power line. And you can see as it came into Lowndes County, uh, it, uh, it came in from the north. Uh, clipped the uh, city limits in many places it clipped the, it was in the city limits and uh, just so you you can see there the the green line versus the orange line the uh, first route was 31.3 miles and the uh, the orange route now is 15.6 that's a 50 percent reduction in our in our proposed route and our current route the number of structures within 660 feet went from 322 to 177 that was a 45 percent reduction the number of water body crossings, 26 to 10, 61 percent. The number of wetland crossings, 58 to 16, a 72 percent reduction. And the number of ro uh, road crossings from 187 to 69, a 63 percent reduction. So that, that kind of is the story as we went through many other counties on that green route. And that is why we chose to, to move further west and south uh, when we uh, uh, got along our current route. This is a, a pretty good, uh, pretty good comparison there. We try to minimize jurisdiction, and then, in, in that case, in Lowndes County, we will probably have to deal with the city as well. On the uh, on the orange route now, we did, we knew, we no longer uh, are in the city limits of Aldosta or any municipality for that matter. Just to uh, to give you some sable trail to date, in May of 2013, we began our initial outreach. Uh, this was letters to landowners, to public officials, to calls, emails, you name it. Uh, we, we had three jurisdictions that predominantly under my domain, that was Alabama, Florida, and Georgia. Uh, at, at last count, I wanted to say we're just three, 300 shy, or about shy of 300 public officials that I have to make sure uh, get as much information as possible. That also includes county managers, Mr. Pritchard, uh, engineers, uh, you name it, uh, county clerks, uh, and over here. And so uh, we try to we try to keep them informed. In June of uh, 13, we began our introduction and survey request to landowners. Uh, at one point, we were just shy of 4,000 landowners along a 470 mile route. You can imagine the uh, the amount of paper that was generated uh, just to get the uh, correspondence out. We uh, we we sought a 600 foot corridor for these surveys. And let me, let me expand on that a little bit. On the survey request, yes, we did a 600-foot corridor. But when we get down and uh, we, 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 we develop our route, this is going to shrink considerably. In the end, we're going to seek, uh, if we get our order and authorization from the FERC, which is our governing body, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and I'll expand on that a little bit uh, in, a, in a bit, we're going we're gonna to seek a 100-foot uh, easement. 50 of that will be permanent. That would be the permanent easement. 50 of the other 100 would be uh, a, a easement that we need during construction. So we need 100 foot during construction, 50 foot would revert back. In the end, it would be a 50 foot easement. Now on that easement, that 50 foot, 
you would not be able to build a structure, in other words, a barn, a house, nor would you be able to plant trees. So I, I just want to, that's kind of the, the mentality there. Uh, in July of 13, FPNL, Florida Power and Light, awarded the project. This, this project came about because of an RFP from a major utility in Florida, predominantly, that uh, indicated they wanted a gas supply by the uh, year 2017. Uh, there were many applicants that uh, uh, participated in that RFP, and then in uh, July, we were awarded that RFP. In September of 2013, surveys started. Uh, in October 2013, we initiated the Federal Energy Regulatory's pre-file process. And let me, let me, the, uh, up until that point, everything we did was getting ready to uh, pre-file. And when you enter into the pre-file process, that basically is a formal step with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. And uh, again, that is a federal agency. The interstate natural gas pipelines are governed by that agency. They are the number one agency that makes the decisions. Let me be emphatic about that. They, they dictate everything and uh, guide us in the prescriptions that we follow. <laughs> That docket has been filed. We are in the pre-file process, and then that began a formal step, uh, as we, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that a little bit later. But uh, that docket now is PF 14-1, and there's been official correspondence in that docket. It's very easy to find. You can go to www.ferc.org and uh, review that docket, and you can see all the, uh, the stuff that has been filed up to this date. October, November 13, hosted 23 voluntary landowner information meetings. So let me, let me be, uh, uh, state another thing. Those were completely voluntary on our behalf. We, we try to be transparent, communicative. Uh, we try to uh, provide as much information as possible. We went beyond what is prescribed by the FERC. We, those, were, those were totally voluntary. Uh, a, a lot of people tended. We hope the information was uh, informative. And then in December and the meeting coming up next week in Clydeville, those are your formal open houses. Those are prescribed by FERC. You have to do those. And so we've uh, been out. We started last week. Uh, we marched down from the, from the north to the south and uh, actually having two different types of meetings each night, one in Florida and one in Georgia and Alabama. So we began those in December. We hope to have those completed next week. Just so you know as well, the uh, uh, scope meetings are coming up, and I'll elaborate on that right here. Here's a proposed project schedule. Uh, we went into an open season, and what that means that an interstate natural gas pipeline company has to, has to market their capacity or the space inside the pipe that we contract with. We announced to the gas world, look, we're building this pipeline. Do you want to become a customer of ours? We've had great uh, uh, response to that. Uh, predominantly, the, uh, the, the major customers right now are in Florida, but we're also talking to some Georgia customers as well. So we hope to move forward on that, and uh, we look for some fruitful discussions with some of those uh, entities within Georgia. We, uh, we got our approval to enter the uh, pre-filing review process. That began in October. We've got our open houses going on right now. Just so you know, and uh, what I mentioned uh, uh, coming up here in the first quarter of 2014, these are the FER scoping meetings. These are meetings that the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission will be the host. And that is where individuals can come to that meeting and, and state their, uh, their issues, and those comments go on officially on the record. That is part of the docket number. Now, that doesn't preclude anyone from right now from from contacting FERC and getting on the uh, record as well. And many of the uh, uh, landowners, stakeholders have uh, also voiced and sent uh, communications to FERC uh, regarding this particular project as well. Uh, in June of 2014, we submit draft resource reports. These are extensive studies on environmental culture. The, the stack can become this big. You can imagine 474 miles of pipe, the, the issues that you have to, to ad address dealing with the environmental, the civil, the cultural issues. We will uh, start filing our, our certificate application. This is the formal application in 2014, October. So we're not even in the formal application process yet. We're still in the pre-filing. This is where you gather the information we will uh, we'll hopefully have that information gathered 
and we, we submit our, our uh, application in 2014, and we will also submit federal permits, I, Section 404, wetlands, uh, uh, state permits as well. We hope to get our FERC certificate by November of 2015. Uh, that usually is a, a lengthy document as well. We, uh, we go over that, and then uh, as we satisfy the, uh, the issuance of that certificate, uh, FERC would give us the uh, notice to proceed. That would be the first quarter of 2016. We hope to start our construction in uh, 2016 and in service May of 2017. It's a good point here. There's been uh, some discussions that we've already started construction. We cannot begin any construction until we receive an order from the FERC. Let me be emphatic about that. Now, there has been development as far as right-of-way agents out there contacting landowners, our stakeholder engagement, uh, things of that nature, legal uh, uh, issues that we've come up. So it's just in the development stage. We are doing that as part of the pre-file process. No construction has started. Let me be emphatic again. May 17th, that's when we turn over the keys, and hopefully gas will start flowing at that time. So what we're hearing... Uh, routing. Uh, numerous alternatives have been proposed. Uh, we've tweaked our line. Uh, in many, uh, when we first started this process, we had numerous uh, lines on the map. Uh, if we go back, there's a, uh, a hub in Alabama called Transco 85. It's where a lot of pipelines come together. And that's where the uh, RFP said the gas had to originate right there and it had to be delivered uh, near Orlando. Uh, we looked at straight lines. Uh, we looked at alternatives. Uh, we, had, uh, we, we, we measured the stakeholder impact, the length, the number of wetland crossings, the number of road crossings, uh, you name it. And uh, I think we've come up with a pretty good route. The, uh, the route as it stands today, 70 to uh, over 80% is adjacent, adjacent or near an existing utility, in other words, the Southern Natural Line or to a, a utility transmission line. That's pretty good, uh, 474 miles. So uh, that was one of the, uh, the reasons that we went with the, uh, the current route that we uh, ex expressed, and that was that uh, orange route on the map. Maps, we've, uh, the, the maps you see today, uh, we're open to uh, uh, provide those. Uh, there's been some uh, discussions, and uh, we've had uh, questions asked to us, why aren't you giving us more detailed maps, including land tracts and things like that? That's proprietary information. We file that with the FERC, but it's up to them. It's up to the FERC to give out any type of proprietary map that would show land tracts. Now, and that, that also deals with the land list. And so, as a respect to privacy, we don't give that out as a whole. We file that with the FERC under a confidentiality agreement. The FERC then provides what data they want to release. So I want to be crystal on that. Safety. Uh, a lot of questions on safety, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question to ask. We strive for every day for zero incidents. I mean, that, that's part of our culture. That goes from our CEO on down. Uh, it's instilled every day. Most of our meetings start with a safety message. Our field guys hold safety messages, safety meetings every day. Uh, it's, it's just part of the culture. Uh, we work with the DOT FEMSA on a regular basis for audits and reviews. The Spectra Energy Pipelines have an excellent safety record. And the interstate pipeline industry is the safest form of transportation of natural gas in the United States when that is compared to trucks, rails, trains, boats, barges, et cetera. Outreach in public meetings, uh, we've had uh, direct contact with landowners through local offices. Uh, that's via private visits, phone conversations, uh, emails, calls, out at the uh, public information meetings, you name it, we try to keep them involved. We've got a dynamic webpage, www.sabletrail.com. The, uh, the Sable Trail team, Ongoing training with our agents, with our field crews, uh, with the when in it, in it, and if we are uh, fortunate to get an order, we'll uh, continue to to have training with construction crews, uh, with anybody out in the field. Uh, again, every meeting that Sable Trail Operations Group and others starts with a safety message. I want to be emphatic about that. And we also have a, a bill of rights that we. Uh, 
attend to in uh, reflecting our core values. And uh, just, just, just to give you a couple of quick bullets on our Sable Trail core values, minimal impact to com people and communities, technical, technically superior and effective safety practice, environmental sensitivity and protection, respect for landowners and communities, relentless attention to best practices in everything we do. Uh, there's been some questions about economic benefits, and we think this is a huge economic uh, development project uh, for the three states that we traverse. Uh, generated about an estimated 1.5 billion in construction impacts. That's during the construction period, and that also would include the development period up to that point. Employ about 15,200 persons during the construction of Sable Trail. Very, very significant. Those construction workers are going to be all over buying fuel, uh, groceries, staying at hotels, at, at RV parks, you name it. Uh, construct, uh, construction impacts, direct and indirect jobs. We rent tools. We fix flats. Equipment breaks down. You name it. Uh, it's, it's, it's huge. Community spending. Uh, again, uh, hotel rentals, rental cars, you name it. Uh, the uh, Valdosta Courtyard by Marriott is, uh, has already uh, experienced our for, uh, forays there. We stay there a lot. Okay, permanent impacts annually. Operate, operations um, and maintenance jobs. Uh, at the end, there will be some full-time jobs uh, from Alabama to Florida. I don't have a direct number today on that, but that's be tweaked. I would assume some of those jobs will be in, uh, in Georgia, but I, I, did, I just don't have that number right now. And then uh, taxes paid to local governments. I might add that the uh, interstate pipeline companies fall under the public service properties. Those are the uh, properties that are assessed at the highest rate in Georgia, so we would be assessed at that rate. And uh, 